So I've seen a lot of videos recently, all basically calling Locha bad. It's been really bugging me because normally when I see videos like this, they're about characters that are actually bad. But the Locha thing struck me as weird because Locha has been seen as a top tier unit until just about now. Trust me, I see everything. So what that means is that public opinion on the character has changed. But why has it changed? What makes Locha not as good as other characters? Or is that even just completely false? Maybe he's still better. Well, today I wanted to bring you a tier list of all of the sustainers in Honkai Star Rail so you can get an idea of sort of what they do and at least my opinion on where they would rank on screen you can see the entire star rail cast at, at least as of right now and on the top row i've moved up all of the sustainers in the game you have vinu japard hoho gallagher lynx fire trailblazer fushuan natasha march 7th locha and adventure who we haven't actually played yet but we've seen some stuff on him so i figured we'd throw him on there anyways i also put welt in this because even though welt isn't a preservation character or an abundance character he can be used as a pseudo sustain and i will talk about that in a little bit but anyways let's talk about who I think are the best sustainers in the game. Let's start with Bailu. Bailu heals a ton, but the issue with Bailu is that she has some RNG in her skill healing, and honestly, the revive mechanic is nice if you have skill issue or if you just are in need of something to bail you out in really, really hard content, but I would much rather prefer a cleanse. And for that reason, it's hard for me to rank Bailu super high because not having a cleanse as a healer can be pretty detrimental to your team setups. Now, the one thing that makes Bailu really stand out is Invigorate. Invigorate's basically going to give you HP whenever you take damage, uh, which is going to help you sustain a lot better. And it's also going to reduce the damage that you actually take when you have Bailu out and the Invigorate effect on. Being a healer with some damage reduction is really good. I don't think Bailu is the best, and I don't think she's the worst. I'm going to stick her middle of the pack and put her in B tier. This is at E0, just by the way, if you're wondering. And real quick, before we get deeper into this video, let me tell you about AFK Journey. This video is sponsored by AFK Journey. AFK Journey is an ethereal RPG idol game that features diverse maps with a pseudo open world, fun puzzles, and and tactical battles. In AFK Journey, your battles are decided by your team composition and strategy. And with over 40 heroes available for free, including NPCs, you'll have plenty of cool things to try. Speaking of heroes, you can get over 200 pulls for free just by playing through the game and completing events. They even have a seven day login just to make things easy. My personal favorite thing about AFK Journey is exploring the world. The unique 3D art style brings everything to life. But my other favorite thing is the social content. AFK Journey has guilds that you can partake in collaborative and PVP content with. There's things like duels, the arena, and even dungeons that you can match up against or with players for. Those game modes plus the random players that you can see running around makes the game feel super alive. If you use my code Braxophone, you can get a bunch of goodies when you get started. Click the link in the description or pinned comment down below and get started on your journey. Now, Japard is someone that I actually think is pretty deserving of a high tier. As of right now, uh, before Adventuring comes out, there's no one in the game that can provide as strong of team-wide shields as Japard can. Japard can also get a shield up pretty quickly, and as a preservation character, he's naturally going to taunt enemies more. Uh, and because he taunts enemies more, he gets more energy out of it. So Japard is pretty easy to sustain with, and he can freeze with a skill, which isn't a huge deal, but it can make a difference in some scenarios. And when he dies, he just gets right back up because uh, he's him. So I really like Japard. And as of right now, there's no one in the game that does what he does, except for Adventuring. I'm going to put Japard in A tier. Next up is Hue Hue. <laughs> Oho is a, is a little baby, a little itty baby that whines and cries all the time. She's adorable though. We, we cherish her for that. Her heals are pretty impressive. I actually really like her heals. Uh, she has blast heals and she gets a cleanse on basically every turn that comes up of the character. You barely ever actually get enough turns past to reach the max of six cleanses <laughs> during your skill duration. But even then, six is so many. You basically get so many free cleanses with her. If you are getting messed up by dots, you can just remove those dots over and over. Uh, if you get multiple characters that get imprisoned, if you get multiple characters that get dominated, God, I wish that were me. Hoho can save you from that. On top of that, her ultimate has a utility that makes her a pseudo harmony unit because Hoho is an abundance character. But when she uses her ultimate, she gives everyone in your team 40% attack buff once you have her talent leveled up pretty high. And she's going to give them 20% energy at max talent level as well. So because she's an abundance with really, really solid healing and cleanses, and because she's basically a pseudo harmony that can give you some attack and some energy back, I'm actually going to put Hoho up in S tier. I believe she is one of the strongest sustainers in the entire game. The only downside to Hoho is that if you're trying to have 100% uptime on healing, she is SP negative, but it's not like you always need 100% healing uptime anyways. So yeah, S tier for me. And let's talk about this guy who's not released yet. Aventurine is an interesting case. Based on the things that I have seen about him, and obviously I can't verify any of the numbers or anything, 
He seems to be a follow-up attack centric preservation character that can shield your entire team on skill. For reference, Japard shields your entire team on ultimate, which means Japard's shielding is a lot more limited than someone like Aventurian's. And if Aventurian's scaling on his shields are good, which it looks like they are from the live stream, if you go watch that bot, it looks really good. His shields look like they're pretty strong for going up on a skill. So the fact that he would have access to that under like normal circumstances at any time is really good. And the fact that he's going to be able to add some follow-up damage to your team basically makes him like a DPS preservation character and just for being more than a preservation having that shield on skill and having damage to it I would actually imagine eventually it's going to be an S tier but I haven't actually gotten the time to test him yet this is a preliminary examination of him it's possible he could be worse than S tier but based on what we know I think he's going to be very good let's talk about March 7th if you know March, March is a character that can provide single target shields for your allies, and with Eidolon, she gets a lot more value out of them. For example, you can give your teammate a starting shield at E2, and at E6, she restores some HP for your teammates with a shield. However, that's only one of the few things she has going for her, because her shield can actually cleanse allies, which means you don't need an abundance with cleanse because her shield can do it, and her shield can provide some taunt value to allies. So if you have a character that's a destruction character that maybe has some higher HP or something, you want to funnel that damage to them, using March 7th could actually be pretty solid. She also has an ultimate that has a chance to freeze enemies and right now freeze has a sort of niche that is very valuable for some of the harder content in the game if you bring march into simulated universe or the higher tier ones and you play her on remembrance path you can effectively just shred enemies with dissociation and her freeze spam i don't know if we're gonna have any sustainers that are like genuinely bad so i'm actually just gonna remove d tier and i'm just gonna add kind of niche but really good in their niche because honestly, I don't know many people that are playing March outside of Simulated Universe, but when you bring her into Simulated Universe, she absolutely pops off. Walt is going to fit into a similar category because Walt's whole thing is that he's not going to be a sustainer that's going to prevent you from death indefinitely. He's not strong enough to do that. Most of Walt's value comes from enemies that are weak to imaginary that when you use his bounce skill, you can break a lot of and imprison them. And then his ultimate that also imprisons enemies regardless of whether or not they're broken. So if you have ER rope Walt with before the tutorial mission starts and you have a defense shredder like Pela, for example, you can get his ult up pretty consistently. And by using his ultimate at the right time, you can keep enemies imprisoned for a lot of the fight, which overall reduces the amount of damage you take while he also does some damage. He's going to fit in this niche category because you don't always use welt but he can fit sometimes and he can make clears a lot faster than running other sustainers as well one example of this is with acheron uh, as you guys know acheron is a character that wants two nihility characters if you run welt as a sustainer and you manage to kill fast enough with acheron you won't take enough damage to necessitate a sustainer that's better than welt so i do think welt's actually an okay sustainer but i don't think he's consistent enough to compete with these guys but it can work in some situations all right let's move on to lynx if you don't know lynx lynx is a character that has heals over time Essentially, when you use her heals, she gives your teammates a buff that gives them heals over time, and she increases their max HP. By doing this, your characters can stay alive a lot easier. She also gives taunts to preservation and destruction characters. So if you have a destruction character that maybe is a little squishy, but then you play with Lynx and then they get the extra HP and they get the survival response, your destruction character is going to take a lot more damage, which gives them a lot more energy, but they're also going to be able to keep damage off of your other teammates while increasing their own HP pool and surviving a lot more. Her ultimate is an AoE heal that also can cleanse your friendly teammates. And this AoE heal can also give the healing over time. Overall, I think Lynx is a really solid healer. And the only thing stopping her from being an absolutely insane unit is the fact that she's a four star and how you've said okay we can't make your multipliers too crazy uh, because you're a four star if your multipliers were too crazy that would not be good for sales of our other uh, of our other characters so i'm gonna put links over in b tier not quite as good as japard but still very strong now the first character you ever get that's a healer at least for free from the game is natasha miss raven herself natasha is a pretty solid healer and she's good enough to get the job done and i don't want anyone to think that's not the case her healing on her skill is pretty decent and and her heals on her ultimate are very useful. She also has a cleanse on her skill, so she's super good overall healer. However, it's hard for me to put her in the same tier as Lynx or Bailu because Lynx provides a utility in the form of taunt, HP raising, and heals over time. And Bailu provides damage reduction and a revive, which honestly the revive isn't that much, but the damage reduction is really huge. And the healing output from Bailu is just insanely high. I definitely don't think she's better than either of them, and I don't think she goes in the same tier. I'm gonna put Natasha in C tier. A lot of folks are probably wondering about Gallagher. He's a really solid character, actually. I was genuinely surprised at how strong this character was. Basically, he's a single target healer that doesn't actually scale his healing off of a specific stat. It's actually just a flat amount, which means that you don't need to build a specific stat 
on him, though you probably want to give him outgoing healing bonus just to improve the amount of healing that he does. And then break effect, because in his kit, his whole thing revolves around him getting a bunch of break effect, converting that to outgoing healing bonus, and him also breaking enemies. His ultimate gives enemies a debuff that makes it so that when you actually hit them, that teammate will heal. The debuff runs for two turns by default and can be improved with more investment in Eidolons. And overall, it's almost like a Lulcha. It's very similar to Lulcha, actually, except Lulcha's isn't a debuff. Lulcha's is indefinite. It will always be there until it runs out of turns on his side, whereas Gallagher's is the enemy's side. So if you're against enemies that are super fast, the major downside to Gallagher is that if they're super fast, they can remove that debuff pretty quickly, and then you just don't get the team healing from him. If you're playing Gallagher, it's important that you run very, very fast characters to take advantage of that healing and that you time his ultimates. Overall, though, I like him a lot. I think he's definitely not as low as Natasha. I have a hard time putting him in the same tier as Japard because Japard has done something, like I said, that nobody has been able to do except for maybe Aventurine. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and put him over in the B tier as well. If you got him to E6, he might move up to the A tier, uh, but just the fact that enemies can remove that debuff so easily makes it tough. Let's talk about Fireblazer. Fireblazer is very strong. The entire kit around Fireblazer is very strong. The entire idea around Fireblazer is very strong. The downside to Fireblazer is that the shields themselves are not usually good enough to sustain a whole team unless you get really lucky with how the damage is spread out. If you clear cycles quickly, enemies have less chances to actually damage you. So Fireblazer can look really good to high investment accounts. And for very low investment accounts, Fireblazer is very good because you're not very far into the game yet. But for those of us on the middle ground and on the, like in the average zone of like the average person trying to clear MOC and stuff, Fireblazer generally is not enough shielding by them themselves unless you reset a few times or unless you get really really lucky or if you break enemies consistently enough to where they just can't damage you now the reason they work so well with Acheron for example is because Acheron has such front-loaded damage that if you play Acheron you're probably going to beat the entire thing quick enough to where Fireblazer can be your only sustain and it's enough and there's other characters you can do that with too but I definitely don't think Fireblazer is a super viable sustain on the same level as some of the other sustains in the game even though I will say for simulated universe specifically they're very very good and for Acheron on teams are very good so i would normally put her in c tier um, but i also feel like the kind of niche thing also applies this one's probably going to get me a lot of shit i know there's a lot of people that really like fireblazer and i like fireblazer i think fireblazer is good c tier doesn't mean bad it's just that so many of these characters in the higher tiers have some kind of extra utility to provide that makes them really really stand out and you're gonna have an easier time clearing with these guys than you're probably gonna have with natasha or fireblazer for most players we are down to the final two Let's talk about Fushuan. So Fushuan is a very unique character. She basically takes a portion of the damage dealt to your characters and redirects it to her and reduces the damage to all of your friendly characters. Her ultimate is it's kind of all right. In simulated universe, it kind of slaps. But what it does do is allow her to self-sustain and also heal some of your teammates. So when you use her ultimate, it heals up your team. And then whenever she gets below half health, if she has one of her two stacks up, she flips the entire universe and then you uh, get her healed by a ton of HP. I think the thing that makes Fushuan stand out a lot to me is that right now we don't have a lot of characters that do the whole damage sharing thing and it's a unique utility that nobody has been able to provide yet the downside of Fushuan is that she doesn't have shields that she gives to everyone on the team so that's why for a lot of like golden gears runs you see a lot of people running Japard and Fushuan or even just like just Japard because in some content you don't need to redirect damage you just need to increase your max HP which is effectively what having a shield does Fushuan is like increasing the amount of damage that you can take not necessarily like increasing your HP although she does that too and the last thing that I think is really important that Fushuan does is she gives your entire team crit rate that's just such a valuable thing for people whose relics suck just like mine <laughs> I actually think Fushuan is up here in the S tier I think she's an amazing character like genuinely one of the best characters in the entire game and she'll be able to help you get through most of the content and finally the man of the hour this is who I wanted to talk about for most of this video because I feel like Lulcha is a character that has actually just been kicked to the curb by a lot of people but by the recommendation of others and not necessarily because he underperforms so what Lulcha does is that he can cleanse with his skill his skill can activate on its own when your characters get to low HP and once he's used his skill twice or uses his ultimate uh basically gets stacks for his skill and his ultimate he activates a field and that field allows you to get HP back whenever you hit an enemy and it's like one character on your team hits an enemy and the entire team gets HP the other utility that Lulcha has is whatever uses an ultimate he dispels buffs that enemies have so he's a mass dispeller AoE dispeller he's a cleanser an auto healer and an auto healer and an auto healer because <laughs> because he's auto 
Do you get it? I definitely would put him above Bailu. I think that his the amount of healing that he does is absolutely insane. I would definitely put him above Lynx. I would definitely put him above Gallagher. In fact, I think that he's like a bit of an upgraded Gallagher. But would I put him as high as Hua Hua Aventurated Bushuan? I mean, all of these limited five-star sustain characters are insane, right? But I guess the major downside that Locha has to all of these characters is that Locha doesn't actually provide like any sort of team buffs or any sort of utility outside of the AoE dispel. He just heals an absolute shit ton and, and that's his entire kit so the reason people have been saying he's not as good a pull is because he doesn't have those extra utilities for min maxing but i'm actually gonna play devil's advocate here i actually think that lolcha is a bit of a zhongli if you've played genshin impact or if you've been paying attention to genshin impact over the years a lot of people have started to turn against uh zhongli well i mean they started turning against zhongli a long time ago right but the idea is that zhongli is a dps loss in like most teams and the benefit of zhongli was just the comfort of playing zhongli that's what i believe is the case with lolcha i think lolcha is a character that you play for comfort and that a lot of the more casual player base can just throw into any team and make most of the content survivable and easy even though he doesn't give all of these bonuses that the other characters do because he doesn't give those bonuses i don't want to put him in the same tier but because of the sheer amount of healing that he does and how easy he makes this game for casual players i am going to put him up in the a tier because i really do think he is an insanely good unit and i still think he's very much worth pulling like the amount of people that have been doom posting him saying he's like a zero out of ten pull because the other characters exist is kind of crazy because he's just so comfy you could know nothing about this game you could not understand a single thing about this game and you play lolcha and you'll probably clear the content just because he heals so damn much he's so forgiving such a good unit and he's mostly sp positive too you can just spam your basic attack with this guy and you don't have to worry about like anything you're just gonna generate a ton of sp if these top three weren't so good at a specific niche, I would definitely put Locha up there. But with that said, he is a top tier unit for sure. And I definitely don't think anyone's going to argue against the fact that his heals are insane and he makes the game really comfy for a lot of people. So this is my sustainer tier list. This is what you should be looking at, in my opinion, for which characters are going to be some of the best to pick up for sustainers. Just a reminder, Aventurian is, uh, he could he could be lower. Um, This is just based off of what we saw in the live stream. He looks really, really good. But I've played every single one of these characters. This is how how I feel about him. If you agree, let me know. And if you don't agree, uh, uh, L plus doctor ratio. Oh, and there's one more thing I have to do, actually. Oh, that is so much better. <laughs>